Greetings, or should I say, Zin Chao, mother factors, and welcome to this week's edition of 101 Facts. My name is Sam, and I'm here to take you on another holiday and foray around the world via fact videos, and this time we're heading to tropical Vietnam, a land steeped in some incredible mythology, stunning vistas, and absolutely crammed to the brim with history. Gah. But how does this help with hair loss? What's the story behind the Vietnamese love market? And how many times must the cannonballs fly before they're forever banned? I know the answer is apparently blown in the wind, but that doesn't really make any sense. Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered, so get ready to wolf down on some foe as we go island hopping and avoid all up, your kids as we go through 101 facts about Vietnam. But hey, before we get to some legendary history of the Vietnamese people, there's dragons and fairies and everything, let's talk about the sponsors of this week's video, Rizzle. Rizzle is an exciting new video platform to get stuck into. You can follow prompts and ask you life's big questions, or just record your take on certain topics. There's a whole community out there just waiting to hear from you. There's even a new feature that means you can collab in the app. And myself and Chris are on Rizzle, giving you facts seven times a week, but also have collab templates waiting and ready for you to join in the fun. So what you're waiting for? Download and get Rizzlin. Number one. So then, let's talk about Nam, or rather, Viet Nam, as two words as it used to be called. Viet was an old Chinese term meaning outsiders, and Chinese history talks of a kingdom called Nam Viet, probably referring to modern-day Vietnam. Number two. Vietnam is actually a bit like me in a way, large in all the right ways and shaped like an S. Actually, wait, that's not even remotely like me. I'm not that tall and I'm more shaped like a C. Anyway, it's 331.2 square kilometers, and the country is indeed shaped a bit like an S. Number 3. 94.5 million people live on this big old S, again, by which I mean Vietnam, not me, nobody lives on me, especially not during this quarantine. Number 4. Some estimate that Vietnam has over 5,800 different islands. Seriously, Jack Shepard would love it there. Number 5. Because of its history, which don't worry we shall partake in in due course, Vietnamese culture is a fusion of different ones, in particular Chinese, Japanese, French and American. Number 6. This right here is the flag of Vietnam. You probably saw it earlier. Nice, huh? Well, like all the best flags, it means something too. The star has five points on it to represent farmers, workers and businessmen, intellectuals, youth and soldiers, and the red bit represents blood that was shed during the war. Less nice, that bit. Number seven. I think it's safe to say the history of Vietnam goes way back. We're talking half a million years back, baby, as that's when archaeological finds suggest humans first rocked up in that area. I mean, that's pretty much dinosaur times, right? Number 8. According to this legend, which is basically the historical version of some bloke told me down the pub, the first ruler of Vietnam was King De Min. Number 9. De Min, descended from a Chinese emperor god, got himself involved with an immortal fairy, we've all been there, which resulted in the birth of Kin Duong, otherwise known as the ruler of the land of red demons. And his son, Lac Long Quan, is considered in this legendary origin story to be the first Vietnamese king. He's also known as the Dragon King, but only to those who he considers close personal friends. Number 10. The Dragon King then married an immortal from China named O Ko. Just to check, you're keeping up with this, right? Good. The power couple produced 100 eggs, which birthed 100 sons, from which Vietnam's first dynasty, the Hong Bang, are said to come from. Number 11. I can see the comments now. Sam, you hot bod, this isn't 101 Legends about Vietnam, I came for cold hard facts. And don't worry, I've got you covered, history nerds. Despite those awesome origin stories, by 111 BCE, Vietnam was conquered by their rather large neighbour, China. Number 12. For the next, oh, I don't know, a thousand years or so, Vietnam was effectively under Chinese control. The local culture was suppressed and Chinese language, culture and even hairstyles were imposed on the population. Number 13. But it wasn't all bad, I guess. The Vietnamese also learned a lot from China, including how to build dikes and irrigation techniques which made rice and paddy agriculture a staple of life to this day. So I suppose they didn't want to overthrow their oppressors. Number 14. Oh, scratch that. The Vietnamese did their best to kick out their Chinese conquerors. One notable rebellion came in 40 CE, when the Trung sisters led an army to victory and declared themselves queens of an independent Vietnam. Their freedom was short-lived, however, as the Chinese returned three years later and took back control. Number 15. Fast forward nine centuries or so to the Tang Dynasty in China, and they're finding themselves in all kinds of trouble. So Vietnam took the chance to go it alone again. You can do it, guys, I believe in you. Number 16. More precisely, in the year 938, the Vietnamese, led by Nguyen, defeated the Chinese at the Battle of Bac Dang. 
In a stroke of genius, the Vietnamese secretly placed spikes in the river just below the high tide mark. So when the Chinese ships came chasing after them, their boats were pierced and sank. The Chinese fled, leaving the Vietnamese to go their own way, like some kind of Fleetwood Mac song. Number 17. Now that's not to be confused with another battle of Bac Dang, which took place 350 years later. By this point, the Mongols had conquered China and fancied a piece of Vietnam too. Living up to their reputation for hordes, the Mongols arrived with 300,000 to 500,000 troops. Number 18. This Mongol invasion came to nothing though after they were defeated in 1288 by a Vietnamese force led by Tran Hung Dao, who remains a bit of a legend. Like the other battle of Bac Dang River, they used the old stakes hidden in the water trick. Bloody knew they would. Number 19. Unfortunately, fighting off Mongol hordes, keeping China at bay and expanding southwards took its toll on Vietnam. I mean, I'm exhausted and I only read it out. So in 1400, the Tran Dynasty was booted out and by 1407, China was back in. Number 20. Once again, the locals were forced to adopt Chinese ways. We're talking growing their hair long and making sure they had white teeth. Plus, Chinese clothing was a must too. Throw in some heavy taxes and slave labor and this final period of Chinese domination sounds tough. Number 21. It didn't last all that long though. Vietnamese hero Le Loi rose up in 1418 and led the Lam Sung uprising for the next decade. Eventually, the Chinese got the message, packed up and went home. Le Loi declared himself the emperor and started the Li Dynasty. Fair enough, I guess. Number 22, ooh ooh. Now here's where things start to get a bit complicated. So basically, the Li Dynasty, otherwise known as the later Li Dynasty, were in power from 1789, but they didn't really have much power from the 16th century onwards. Number 23. Under their watch, and what can only be described as a bit of historical foreshadowing, Vietnam was effectively divided into two. In the north, the Trin Lords were in charge, and in the south, it was the Nguyen Lords who held sway. Number 24. The Trin and Nguyen Lords didn't play nice though, which meant you had a situation where these two ruling families were fighting one another while both serving the Li Dynasty, who were technically meant to be in charge, but had about as much authority as a supply teacher trying to control lunchtime detention. Oh, and breathe, I told you it was complicated. Number 25. If you thought the other bit was complicated, you're gonna love this. Basically, three brothers, Nguyen Hugh, Nguyen Nak, and Nguyen Lu, led an uprising known as the Tay Sun Rebellion in the 1770s. Number 26. Now, the Nguyen brothers were in no relation to the Nguyen lords and defeated them in the south and the Trin lords in the north. So now the Nguyen brothers became rulers of Vietnam. Number 27. Except there was another Nguyen, Nguyen An. This dude was an exiled Nguyen lord who returned to Vietnam and took over the country in 1802 from the other Nguyens. Got that? Okay, good. So in short, Vietnam was reunited by 1802 and the capital was moved to Hue. Number 28. Now we're in the 19th century, and what's that I can see on the horizon? Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's European imperialism, the French flavor. In 1847, France attacked Da Nang Harbor, and a decade later invaded Vietnam. Number 29. France managed to conquer part of Vietnam, establishing a colony called Cochin China in 1862. Number 30. The French were still hungry for more territory though, and over the next 25 years, slowly took over the country. In 1887, French Indochina was established, ending Vietnamese independence. Number 31. Now sure, the French did some stuff. Roads, canals, harbours and railways, even connecting Saigon with Hanoi via rail. But life wasn't exactly peachy. By the time World War II broke out, half the population were landless, only 15% of children went to school, and 80% of the population were illiterate. Number 32. When World War II kicked off proper, Vietnam was essentially under Japanese occupation from 1940 onwards, after the French colonial administration invited 30,000 Japanese troops into the country. Number 33. It was during this period, in 1941 to be precise, that some chap called Ho Chi Minh formed the League for the Independence of Vietnam, otherwise known as the Viet Minh. Number 34. By the end of the war, with Japanese power broken and French forces weak, Ho Chi Minh took the opportunity to declare Vietnamese independence in 1945. He even took inspiration from the US Declaration of Independence when he made the announcement. Number 35. Except not everyone was happy with the idea of an independent Vietnam. I'm looking at you here, France, and just a year later, in 1946, the Viet Minh and French forces were at war. Number 36. The fight against the French went on for eight years, and this is where American involvement began. You see, that Ho Chi Minh fellow liked to dabble in a bit of old communism, and the USA was coming down with a nasty bit of Cold War fever, so they tried to help the French win. Number 37. 
But on the 7th of May 1954, 10,000 French troops surrendered at the DMPN Few after a 57 day siege. Ho Chi Minh's forces had won, and in the resulting peace talks, Vietnam was divided into two. Number 38. The communists got the northern half, while down south, the regime under the anti communist leader Ngo Dinh Diem was founded. Although he wasn't exactly popular and was assassinated in 1963, and South Vietnam only got more unstable from there. Number 39. The North, hoping to unite the two Vietnams, created the Viet Cong to wage a guerrilla war in South Vietnam and by the mid-1960s was also sending its own troops to top of the South Vietnamese government. Number 40. That's when America really did step it up. Now, we could probably do a whole 101 fact about the Vietnam War. Let us know if you want that, by the way. But for now, let's just say the war lasted until 1975. It led to a North Vietnamese victory and Vietnam remains a communist country to this day. Number 41. But the cost of the war was huge. Over 200,000 South Vietnamese troops were killed and North Vietnam and Viet Cong losses were at a million. 10% of the entire population, that's 4 million civilians, were either killed or injured in the conflict. Almost 60,000 Americans were KIA or MIA. The meaning of life. This was in due part to attacks like 1968's Tet Offensive, in which North Vietnam launched a series of coordinated attacks against over 100 South Vietnamese cities near the start of the Lunar New Year. Number 43. Now, the US and South Vietnam were taken surprised by this, but held off the attack, meaning the communists never actually took over any of the cities they tried to. Number 44. The war was horrific and known to cause PTSD in many people who fought in it. One particular horrifying event was the My Lai Massacre, in which American soldiers killed 400 unarmed civilians in the village of My Lai. Number 45. The My Lai Massacre has caused protests across the world, and in fact has since been studied examining the psychology of the perpetrators and their agency. Number 46. There is now a memorial in Sun Mai called the Sun Mai Memorial dedicated to the memory of those lost in My Lai. It was built 10 years after the atrocity in 1978. Number 47. While the US left the war in 1973 after they signed a peace treaty with North Vietnam, the South and North kept fighting. In fact, the war didn't really end until the North conquered Saigon and renamed it Ho Chi Minh City. Number 48. By the way, also known as Uncle Ho, Ho Chi Minh's body was embalmed when he died, obviously, and is on display in a mausoleum, though confusingly that's in Hanoi. Number 49. Ho Chi Minh City has architecture that was very influenced by the French colonialism in Vietnam. For instance, it has the Notre Dame Cathedral Basilica of Saigon, full name Cathedral Basilica of Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception, which was finished by French colonists in 1880. Number 50. Ho Chi Minh City also has lots of subterranean secrets too. Futo Hoa Tunnel, for instance, was first dug in 1930 by resistance fighters, and the network was then expanded and used for decades. Number 51. There's also a vast network called the Ku Chi Tunnels, used in Saigon, which has been preserved by the Vietnamese government, all 121 kilometers of it. The tunnels have been made wider, would you believe, to accommodate tourists, and uh, oh sorry, if you're claustrophobic you probably should have looked away by now. Number 52. There's a train service between Ho Chi Minh City and Hanoi that's colloquially known as the Reunification Expressway. It serves as a big old 1,726 kilometer long symbol of a unified Vietnam. Number 53. Vietnam's capital is Hanoi, and about 8 million people live there. Really, this should help you out in at least one Zoom quiz, so you're welcome. Number 54. Now, Hanoi means inside the rivers, but it's had a few other names. During different dynasties through history, it's been known as Long Bien, Dai La, Tang Long, Dong Kin, and Bak Tan. Number 55. Hanoi has a big old bridge called the Long Bien Bridge of Hanoi, which is long and a bridge and in Hanoi. Great name. It was designed by Alexandre Gustave Eiffel. And if that name sounds familiar, it's because he's the bloke that designed the, well, Eiffel Tower and the Statue of Liberty too. He got around. Number 56. Hanoi's Hoan Kiem Lake was home to a legendary turtle called Ku Roa, or Great Grandfather Turtle. Now, people were genuinely devastated when he died in 2016 of natural causes at an unknown age. There was mourning across the country. Number 57. In the 15th century, the legend says, a nationalist hero borrowed a magic sword, possibly from a dragon king, and wielded it to drive out the Chinese forces. He then returned it to a turtle that surfaced in Hoan Kiem Lake, the Lake of the Returned Sword in central Hanoi. Ku Rua was an embodiment of this turtle. Number 58. Turtles are one of the four animals that the Vietnamese consider sacred, along with dragons, unicorns, and phoenixes. Turtles are also the only ones that are actually real. Number 59. 
In fact, Kuru had died at such a time it was considered a bad omen. It was when the Communist Party were choosing a new leader for the next five years for the country. Some thought that Kuru's death meant doom was coming. Number 60. The largest ceramic mosaic in the world is in Hanoi. It's four kilometers long, took three years to create, and was based on an idea by journalist Nguyen Tutoi. Number 61. We've mentioned it briefly, but Lunar New Year, also known as Tet, is a festival that's a big deal in Vietnam. This usually happens in February. Number 62. Tet usually lasts for about three days, with big crowds making noises with firecrackers or gongs to try and ward off evil spirits. Silly, really, because we know what you actually have to do is cross the streams. Number 63. Tet is also important because the Vietnamese believe that what happens on the first day of the new year kind of sets the tone for the rest of it. Like whatever snack you serve first at a dinner party. That's a good analogy and you know it. This is why cutting hair and fingernails is taboo during this time in case you somehow unknowingly remove good luck. Nintendo 64. There's also the Vietnam love market. On the 27th of each year, ex-lovers and partners meet one another on mutual ground to celebrate how they've grown and show one another respect. You can also meet singles there too. Ooh. Number 65. The history of the love market comes from a story of two star-crossed lovers, Mr. Ba and Miss Oot, one from a poor family and the other from a rich. They meet but are forbidden to marry, leading to massive fights between the families, so they break up, only meeting once a year on March the 27th. Number 66. There's an old entertainment tradition in Vietnam called water puppetry, which is, well, puppetry that has water at the bottom. This splashy little practice has been going on for about 4,000 years now. Number 67. Vietnam is home to the world's largest cave, which has led my brain to form a million jokes that I can't say. It's called Hang Sung Doong Cave, and it's only 3 million years old, it's 5 kilometers long, and it's only been open to the public for 6 years. Which reminds me, I need to call your mum. Number 68. Anyway, Ha Long Bay is a beautiful area of Nam, so beautiful that it's now one of the seven new natural wonders of the world and is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Number 69... Dong. Also, in case you were wondering, you can fly to Vietnam. I know, right? What facts we give you here? In fact, there are 45 airports in the whole country. Almost enough for a different one a week for a year, although your carbon footprint will be... Uh, just horrendous. Number 70. Moving on to the good eats now, the Vietnamese believe that there is the Tao Quan, or three kitchen gods, who look over kitchens inside the home and report their findings back to the mythical Jade Emperor for some reason. Number 71. The most popular Vietnamese dish is probably pho. Now in case yo don't know about pho, it's a broth poured over a bed of soft rice noodles and sliced meat, often being, you know, gently sprayed with a handful of chopped herbs and chives. Number 72. Pho came around at the end of the 19th century, when French colonialism meant there was a lot more beef available in Vietnam. And I'm not just talking about fighting. This meant there was lots of beef bones to make broth from, and lo and behold, pho. Number 73. And hey, why not have that pho with some delicious wine? Snake wine! And it's nothing to do with Metal Gear Solid, by the way. Snake wine is made of, well, rice wine, but with a dead snake in it. But don't worry, as I say, the snake is dead, and its venom is cancelled out by the alcohol, apparently. Number 74. Snake wine is said to have healing powers and was first sold as a medicine to deal with things like hair loss or lack of virility. For certainly neither things that I suffer from, nope, not me. It apparently tastes like fishy chicken. Mmm. Number 75. Oh, and by the way, there's no legal drinking age in Vietnam, only an age at which you're allowed to buy it, which is 18. If you've somehow got your hands on alcohol without buying it and you're younger than that, you can get trashed, four-year-olds, in Vietnam. Although, don't, uh, don't advise that. Why are four-year-olds watching this? Number 76. Tiet Can is a tasty looking Vietnamese dish, isn't it? Those red tomato looking juices. Mm. Oh, sorry, no, actually, that's not tomato. That's animal blood. Raw animal blood. It's normally blood that belongs to, well, okay, used to belong to ducks, geese, or pigs. Number 77. Anyway, on to other juices. Vietnam is the second largest producer of coffee in the world, second only to Brazil. For instance, in 2012 and 2013, Vietnam produced 22 million 60 kilogram bags of coffee. Number 78. One thing it does win at, though, Vietnam is the biggest producer of cashew nuts in the world. You don't have to be nuts to live there, but it helps. Ha <laughs> ha ha. Number 79. An exotic fruit grows in Vietnam called the star apple, which is very sweet. In Vietnamese, it's known as vu sua, or milky breast, and is colloquially known as the breast milk fruit. Number 80. In Vietnam, it seems that two wheels are far more popular than one, or indeed four. That's because there are more than 45 million registered motorbikes in the country. I don't know what the figures are on unicycles, but I imagine there's not 45 million of them. 
Number 81. Now look at this, doesn't this look like an absolute joy to wear? Known as Al Yai, this is an outfit worn on special occasions in Vietnam. It used to be unisex too, so us absolute lads got in on the action. Number 82. The most popular last name in Vietnam is Nguyen, as I'm sure you can tell from earlier when I said it a thousand times or so. In fact, between 30 to 40% of people have this name. Number 83. The currency of Vietnam is Dong. That's it. No joke there. Nope. None at all. Not even a remotely funny name. Number 84. The Forbidden Purple City in Huey is a place where confusingly you can visit, but certain areas of it are sacred and are only allowed to be entered by the royal family and their servants. Number 85. Vietnam has its own sport. It's known as Sepak Tak Roar or Kick Volleyball and looks like a bloody good laugh actually, and I wish I was able to do it at PE. High kicks, high kicks, this is how we do it. Number 86. When you're hoping for something, like I am that Jennifer Lawrence meets me, do you do this? Well don't do it in Vietnam. This hand gesture is actually seen as being incredibly rude there, and will result in not nice things happening. Number 87. Panzapan is not only a great name for a young prince or something, but it's also a Vietnamese mountain. It's 3,147.3 meters high, the tallest point in the Indo-Chinese province. Number 88. Normally, Panzapan takes a few days to climb on top of, but luckily you can go by cable car. At 6,292.5 meters, it actually has the Guinness World Record for the longest non-stop three-rope cable car. It takes about 20 minutes. Number 89. 16% of the world's animal species live in Vietnam, making their biodiversity score pretty high, all things considered. Number 90. Apparently, according to those money nerds at the World Bank, Vietnam has one of the lowest rates of unemployment in the world, at 2.2% of the population, since you asked, I imagine. Number 91. This absolute little beauty is Nin Bin. Lovely, eh? If you recognise that, it's where Kong Skull Island was filmed. Everyone remembers that movie, right? Kong Skull Island? Number 92. While it was one of the first Hollywood movies to be shot there, it's not the only one. Films shot in Vietnam include 2015's Pan and upcoming movies The Five Bloods on Netflix and Artemis Fowl on Disney+. Plus. Number 93. It may not surprise you to learn that the highest grossing film of all time in Vietnam is Avengers Endgame with Infinity War at number 3, but in its second is its own Kua Lai Vo Bao, or Win Back My Pregnant Wife. It got 190 billion dong in its first two months. That's 8.2 million dollars by the way. Number 94. In at fourth place is a uh, rom-com called M. Chua 18, or Jailbait, which has a pretty disturbing premise for a rom-com, but anyway. It may interest you to know that Kong Skull Island is actually at number 5. Number 95. In fact, Kong Skull Island has actually been fairly significant to Vietnam. Its director, Jordan Vogt Roberts, was named Vietnam's tourism ambassador from 2017 to 2020. Number 96. While Korea has K-pop, Vietnam has V-pop. It's had a lot of American and European influences, such as rock and EDM, although V-pop these days is more a general term covering music that young people like. You know, boomer talk. Number 97. Phu Quoc is the biggest island in all of Vietnam, which has 574 square kilometers, but strangely foreigners can go there without a visa and stay there for up to 30 days. Number 98. There's also a perfume river in Hue. It's 30 kilometers long and is so named not because some celebrity did a weird ad for it, but because orchids fall in it, making it smell very nice indeed. And we've got the Thames. <laughs> Number 99. Most recently, Vietnam has been reveling in success in terms of its response to COVID-19. Only about 300 people were infected at all in the country, and of those, nobody died. Number 100. Now they did this by reacting very, very quickly when cases started appearing and sending anybody who entered the country into quarantine centers. They didn't even have a national lockdown, they only had local ones. They smashed it, basically. Number 101. Vietnam's national animal, by the way, is the humble water buffalo. Look at it, what a unit. So that was 101 facts about Vietnam. Have you been to Vietnam? Are you currently in Vietnam? Do you want to go to Vietnam? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, what else do you want to see from us at 101 Facts, huh? Huh? Hmm? I want to know. And hey, if you can, give this video a like. We'd love it. And also, if you subscribe and you haven't done so already, we'd love it even more. 550,000 lovely mother factors so far. Why not join the club? In the meantime, though, two videos on screen, specially chosen for you. They'll make your dreams come true. Ooh. But which one will do so first? Why not click and have a look? And I'll see you there. Bye.